messengers as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise right here made me think about something made me remember about the warnings that we get from the prophets you know what prophets are these are the ones that Allah has sent to the human beings to warn them shall I tell you about it yes long ago Allah created the heavens the earth and everything in between Allah also created angels now you know angels they're made out of light and they never make any mistakes because they don't make any choices. Allah chooses everything for them. But then Allah created the jinn, and he gave them the ability to choose, make choices. And Allah made them from a smokeless fire. Then Allah made his last and his best of creations, which is human beings. He made human beings from the earth. And he also let human beings make choices too. And when they make the right choices, they get rewarded by Allah. But when they make the wrong choices, then they're in big trouble. So what happens is that Allah sends warners or prophets to the human beings from time to time to remind them on how to behave, what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Way back, way, way, way back, even before the creation of Adam, when Allah created the jinn, there was one jinn amongst all of the jinn he used to worship Allah day and night, in the morning and at night. And then Allah raised him up, raised him up, raised him up higher and higher until he was praying with angels. Praying beside what? The angels. He was pretty happy, you see. And then when Allah created the first human being, he said, I order all to bow down because of my creation of this human being. And all bowed down, except one. And who do you think it was? It was that one jinn amongst all the angels who would not bow down. He said, I'm better than him. Me, I'm made from a smokeless fire. Him, he's made out of dirt, so I won't bow down. And Allah told him, you know, you're going to go to hell for this. He said, I don't care. Just let me take him and all of his children to hell with me. And who was that? His name is Iblis or Lucifer. And until now, he still is trying to take the children of the first human to hell with him. By the way, would you like to know who is the name of the first of all of the human beings? Yes. Yeah. If you speak English, his name is Adam. And if you speak Arabic, his name is Adam. If you speak French or German or Russian or Italian or Spanish or Urdu, his name is Adam. It's the same in all the languages all over the world. Everybody knows the first man's name was what? Adam. But then, over the centuries, people kind of got away from the message. So Allah had to come back and tell him again and again and again until Allah sent the last and the final messenger to the human beings and jinn for all times and do you know who that was? can you guess? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah sent him as a mercy or rahmah to the alameen to all of the worlds 
Now, what happened in the very beginning was that Adam, alayhi salam, we usually say, peace be upon him. When we say any prophet's name, we should say, peace be upon him, right? So we'll say, alayhi salam, or peace be upon him. And when Adam, alayhi salam, was first created, Allah created him in the Jannah, in the best condition. He was in the best place in paradise. But he was alone. Even though he could have anything he wanted, he could have all the food he'd like. He could have anything to drink he would like. He could do as he liked. But he was alone. So Allah created someone for him, a mate. And he created his mate from a bone in his side. And he created a woman. Would you like to know what her name was? Well, in English they call her Eve. But in Arabic her name is Hawa. Can you say Hawa? Hawa. 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 Huh? <laughs> now, when Allah created Hawa, she was the first woman. And from Adam and from Hawa, from these two, Allah created all the people who came. And then their children had children and their children had children and children and children until now. Which means, by the way, all human beings came from one source. So all the humans everywhere are brothers and sisters to each other in humanity. But when they come to the right belief, then they become even better. They become brothers and sisters in faith as believers. Now, after Allah created Adam and created Eve, then what do you think happened? They were both in pretty good shape, by the way. They could have anything they wanted. Then Allah gave them a big test. He said, you can have anything from all that you see everywhere, in all the paradise, in all of the heaven, they could have anything. Except one thing Allah told them. What do you think he told them? Don't eat anything from that tree right there. And what do you think happened? Well, the devil, by the way, he's called Shaitan too. He believes Shaitan, you know. Satan, have you heard about this? So Shaitan came to them and did what's called wiswas in their ears and told them, eat it, go ahead, it's okay, eat it, go to the tree and eat it. And they went over and they took the fruit and they ate it. And then they were in big trouble with the law. Big trouble with the law. Because they ate the fruit? No, that's not what the problem is. Because Allah told them to do something or not to do something, then that's what you have to do. You have to obey. So they blew it on that test. So Allah ordered Adam and his wife and the Iblis, the Shaitan, get down all of you from here. Get down, get down. And he put them on the earth. And Allah speaks about this in the Quran. He tells us that He created the human being. That He created human being in the best shape. The best shape. And then the human beings, they reduce themselves to the lowest of the low of the low. Why? Because they make the wrong choices. The wrong behavior, the wrong choices. Allah also told us about this in the Quran when he said he never changes the condition of a people until they change themselves. And specifically, the understanding we know from Quran that when Adam salam, and his wife ate this, they brought this on themselves. They made their own choice. They made this mistake. So Allah put them to a new condition. Their old condition was good. The new one was not so good. Why? Because they changed themselves. Likewise, if a human being would like to be better, they need to work on themselves to become better. Because when you change yourself, inshallah, God willing, Allah will change the condition. These are some of the things that we've learned from the prophets. Sometimes people will ask me, well, how do you know this? How can you be sure? What makes you so sure there are prophets? The most important thing of all is to know that they always brought one main message. And if you know this one main message, you will instantly recognize, is this man a prophet? Is this person a prophet or not? 
How? By the message they bring. Listen to the message. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. Can you say that? La ilaha? La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha? La ilaha illa Allah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Very good. La ilaha illa Allah. But what does that mean? Many people say that. Today, maybe more than one and a half billion human beings that say they're Muslims, they say these words. La ilaha illa Allah. But what does it mean? La ilaha means la is no, right? If you know any Arabs, then they have little children, you know? Whenever the children get into something, the mother says, la, 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 like this all the time. La, la, because you shouldn't do that, yeah? So she's telling them in Arabic, don't, la, no. Ilaha, what is ilaha? It means something you worship, something you bow down to, something you praise it. Something you are thankful because you think it gives you something. So this thing worshipped is called an Elah in Arabic. And also in Hebrew it's called El. El and also Elohim. Now why I'm mentioning this is because it's not only in Arabic that we know this. It's also from the Jews in Hebrew. It's also from the Christians in the Aramaic language. And that's one of the proofs that I'm talking about. Because through the centuries and over the many, many, many years, in all of the lands across the world, people have come and in their language have said essentially the same words. There's no God to worship. No God to worship. And then the rest of it, illa except Allah. And that's the message that these prophets brought to tell the people. La ilaha illallah. If we know this, then we're all ready to understand now more about these prophets, these messengers of Allah. Another interesting thing for us as Muslims is that prophets are different from messengers because all the prophets and all the messengers are prophets. All of them are from the same. But there are those who are also called Rasul in Arabic language. It means messengers. You know the difference? Well, as I said earlier, the prophets, we knew them because of their message they carry and also we know them because they have had some kind of experience with Allah or through his angel he has an angel named Jabril or Gabriel who communicates to the people and when this person whoever it might be starts to get what's called revelation he starts to tell the people there's only one God worship him but then when he comes with a book or a scripture, or anything which is written down, then what happens? He becomes a Rasul. And that's the difference between a prophet and a messenger. Or in Arabic, Nabi, that's a prophet, and Rasul, that's a messenger. Now, to help the ones who don't know a lot of Arabic, I like to sometimes give a little something extra here so you can get the idea. In English, we have a word called epistle. That means a message that you give somebody, like email. You know, you give somebody an epistle. Whoever brings it is called an apostle. Apostles give epistles. And rasuls give arsala. So the word in Arabic, arsala, is the message. Everybody got that? Yes. yes. What's the message? Who remembers? What is the message? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Very good. We didn't come to that second part yet, but we're going to get on to that. Because each of these prophets has a name. Now, some of them, we know their names exactly. Some of them have been referred to by what they did, and others, we don't know their name. Can you guess how many prophets there were? Do you think there were more than 50? Think there's more than 100? Do you think there were more than 1,000 prophets that came? How many do you think? How many? There are 25 prophets. How many? 25 prophets. Prophets, we have more than 124,000. Wow. But the point we're trying to make is that always throughout history, there were these prophets who came and they warned their people. But not all of them brought books or not all of them had a Quran, but all of them carried the same message. The message is what? You only worship Allah and nothing else. Make sense? Now, sometimes people ask me about the prophets and they'll say, 
well, are they perfect? Well, I tell them, if you mean by that, that they can't make mistakes, first of all, the only one who doesn't make any mistakes is Allah. And his angels, of course, they have to obey Allah, so they're not going to make any mistakes either. But from the jinn, all of them will make mistakes. And from human beings, all of them make mistakes. So we know that anybody who is a prophet is a human being, makes mistakes. So they're not perfect, but, but they never make the big mistakes of not understanding the message that they have. La ilaha illallah. So all the prophets, they know this, and they never break that. They always uh, stay away from worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me explain something else, and I think this will help you. You see, we have around us right now many trees, we have plants, we have many things all over. See all of this? It's beautiful, yeah? I love it. Do you love it? But I don't go to this tree over here. I don't go to the plants, and I don't ask them for anything. So if you see somebody talking to trees, it might be it's okay, because some people like to do that. But if they start getting real serious and asking, Oh, tree, I need this, and I need something else. How the tree can help you? A tree can't walk. A tree can't go anywhere, right? So why would you ask this tree? Then, what about these rocks around here? Those are nice rocks, round rocks, square rocks, flat rocks, big rocks, little rocks. But would you ask a rock for something? I don't think so. What's a rock going to do? He can't move at all. At least the tree can move around in the wind a little bit, do a little bit of a dance or something, huh? But a rock, he's not going anywhere. You're going to ask the rock, excuse me, rock, how do I get from here back home? I'm lost in, what, a rock going to say anything? No. So why, if you can't ask a rock for directions, you sure wouldn't pray to a rock, would you? But some people pick up rocks and they carve the rocks. They change the rock, make it look like something. They said, now pray to it. Ask it. Still can't help him, can it? Not only it's bad rock, this rock is defaced. And it's worse off than it was. So anybody who's asking from a rock or a stick or a stone or a bone, some people are looking at bones and thinking the bone can help them. They go to bones of dead people and they're asking, oh, I need this, I need that. Why? He's dead. <laughs> if anybody needs him, he needed more than you. He doesn't even have any skin. He's going to ask the bone? I don't think so. Doesn't make sense, does it? I don't think so. The beautiful thing about this message that comes with all these prophets is that children understand it the best. Little children, the smaller children, they understand it clear. When you say there's only one God and you worship him. Make sense? You understand it? Right? I understand it. It's very simple. Another interesting thing about it, that whenever any prophet talks to the people, he never lies. He always tells the truth. This is a characteristic of the prophets. Also, they don't commit any major sin. So that's why some people say prophets are perfect. Compared to me, they're all perfect. Because I make mistakes. I make sins just like any human being. But what should we do? That's what the prophets told us too. If you made a mistake, prophets told you how to fix the mistake. All you have to do is go back to Allah. Go back to Allah. Ask Allah. Then you can't ask the rock, the stick, the stone, the bone. You can only ask Allah. And when you ask Allah, He likes that. And He'll give you answers. He'll guide you. He'll show you the way. But a person has to want it. If you really want to be guided by Allah, all you have to do is say, Allah, guide me. Now, again, you could say, well, then what do I need a prophet for? Well, you wouldn't have known that if the prophet didn't tell you, would you? Because many people have tried to figure this out. Some very smart people, very intellectual. Oh, yeah, they got degrees more than a thermometer. They got so much brains, even their professors. But they never figured it out yet. They keep thinking, thinking. Uh, is it like this? No, maybe it's like that. No, it's like this. Maybe the God is over here. No, maybe God is that. No, maybe, uh, maybe I'm the God. People say many crazy things. It's not until guidance comes. And Allah sends prophets to guide the people. But there's a lot of interesting stories about what happened to these prophets when they tried to give the message to the people. One of the key rules about being a prophet is to recognize that you cannot 
make the people accept what you're going to say. So the prophets had a tough job. Tough job. Because when they went to the people, like, well, if I come to you and I said, okay, everybody get up. Maybe you'll get up. Maybe. If I said, everybody, let's go eat ice cream. You'll say, okay, that sounds good to me. Let's go eat some ice cream, right? But when the prophets came and said, let's just worship God by himself, nothing else, then what you're going to see? Big problem. They'll say, why? Why should I? You say, well, it's good for you. Prove it. And you say, well, how about this and this? And they'll say, ah, I don't want it. So you can't force people to understand, but you can try. And what you do, you tell them what you know about the message. The message of what? Worship Allah. Give everything to Allah. Because if you give it all to Allah, Himself, one, God, then inshallah, you'll be in good shape. That's the first and foremost. Now, sometimes when we talk about these subjects, about the prophets, people ask questions about what should we eat, where should we go, can we sit around listening to music, things like this. And those things are interesting, but the most important thing of all is to know there really is God. And he sent signs. Allah sent many signs, many, many signs for us to recognize that there's only one God. But the best thing he did for us is he sent these messengers to make it so easy, so easy for us that we know there's only one God. And you guys were talking about a particular messenger. You said Muhammad. And I want to tell you not just about Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him, but as many messengers as we can. So maybe we could be together in the future, sit together again and talk like this and express and learn more about the prophets. Would you like to do that? You can say yes if you want to. Yes. <laughs> yup. <laughs> That's from Texas. MashaAllah. Yep. So when we talk about these things, a couple of things I want to remember. First is that when we mention any prophet's name, we're going to say peace be upon him or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another thing is when we talk about prophets, we don't make any difference between, because all the prophets to us are prophets. They say something, we know it's true because they don't lie. Now, Allah will elevate prophets according to the way he wants to, but that's up to Allah. So we love all these prophets, we respect all of them, and we try our best to follow. But the last prophet who comes, this is the one we have to follow now, because now we live in this area. And so because of that, we will follow the last prophet who came. And now we can mention his name is what? Muhammad. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or peace be upon him. Very good. Now, I like the way you guys are behaving now. This looks very nice, and it makes me happy. And I'm excited, I think, to continue doing this. And maybe we can have more stories of the prophet in the future. Sit together and share and have fun. Would you like that? Yes. You like Nothing. to do that? Okay. Well, I think that's really sweet. And I always like to say something nice when I close off a program, and I pray to Allah to guide all of us to know and understand about Him and this message and to obey His messengers. Amin. 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 Amin.